Nurses have traditionally been schooled in a systems approach to nursing, but more holistic approaches are being developed, and these influence how nursing is taught and practiced. The Nursing as Caring theory is one of these approaches. In this program, Nursing as Caring is discussed by its founders, Dr. Anne Boykin and Dr. Savina Schonifer. Well, how did I come to think about nursing as caring? Um, you know, I've been a nurse since the 60s and have studied nursing in regular ways, studying it from a systems perspective, teaching it from a systems perspective, just as I was taught. And I think that's very common with faculty that we teach as we were taught. And all of the different places that I had taught, there was one thing that always bothered me. And that truly was that I didn't think we were really studying the discipline of nursing. I knew we were focusing on medical science and bringing a little bit of nursing in at the end called nursing care. But somehow or other, I just knew we never focused on the person. But I really didn't know how to do that either because I'd never witnessed it. I'd never been taught that, so I didn't know. And um, in 1981, when I came to Florida Atlantic University, the model for the study of nursing was systems model, pretty much like it was at a lot of institutions at the time. And in the early 80s, I had an opportunity to attend an International Association for Human Caring conference. And that really changed my life because it was a very small group of scholars devoted to the study of caring. You know, Jean Watson, Dolores Gott, Doris Riemann, Madeline Leininger, Kathleen Valentine, just a small group. So over the years, in the very beginning piece of that, what we did is we were a very small faculty. And we came together at a table, and I said, let's bring our syllabus and let's look at what are we studying. And we did, including myself. And we sorted it all out into little piles. And we had pathophysiology and pharmacology and all of the empirical knowledges. And so I said, well, where's the nursing content? And there was a big hole. And how would we fill that hole? And over the course of many years, we developed the study of caring. We did a little bit of caring. We went to the literature and we studied it a little. And we realized that, that there was a really a formal way we could really study caring. And we began then to study Mayer off and we can't, began to bring in works that were really substantively grounded in caring. And it was the nursing situation that really filled that void for the study of nursing. The importance of nursing as caring is that it is a perspective that is grounded in the humanness of personhood, that it is grounded in the phenomena of nursing as person. And that is what it is all about. It is coming to know person, to respond to person, to research from that human perspective and to answer the questions that matter to those being nursed. In working with faculty, we recognized that there needed to be a shared consensus of, of an understanding of caring to undergird the curriculum. However, um, Anne and I wanted to go beyond that curriculum work and actually develop a full-fledged theoretical systematic expression of nursing as caring. We asked ourselves, in our view, what's the unique focus of nursing? Where does caring fit as a central part of the unique focus of nursing? And what we came up with was the understanding that stated in our statement of focus. Nursing is nurturing persons, living caring, and growing in caring. The first and most fundamental assumption underlying the theory of nursing as caring is that persons are caring by virtue of their humanness. So there's no question we don't have to evaluate whether a person is caring or not. We start with that assumption. Simone Roach, who talks about caring, says that although it's innate within us, we have to draw it forward. We have to give the person something to respond to that matters to them 
to bring forth that innate capability. So from a nursing perspective, if I'm in the emergency department and I have someone who walks into that emergency department who's a rapist, how do I live out that assumption that persons are caring by virtue of their humanness? This person is a caring person. Now it's my responsibility as a nurse to see past the act because I am not there to judge that act. There is a system that we have to judge that. I am there as nurse to see the person as caring person and to nurture and support the person in what matters to them. Now, if I'm not able to get past the act, which sometimes happen because we are human, then I have to acknowledge that I cannot nurse. That then I may be able to do things to the patient, really putting that patient in an object role. You know, I may be able to start the IV, I may be able to do the things I need to do, but I cannot truly nurse because I'm not able to get to know you as person and to come to know what matters to you. The next assumption that's uh, really important to an understanding of the practice of this theory is that persons are caring moment to moment. Persons live their caring from moment to moment, express their own caring ways very uniquely. As living caring, we do live it moment to moment. Um, how I live my caring right now informs me changes me and helps me to grow in how I live my caring in the next moment. And each moment is an opportunity for us to choose to live caring or not. We always have the choice to express our caring in the moment or not. But the obligation, if we believe that caring is the human mode of being, that all persons are caring by virtue of the humanness, the obligation is to pay attention to be intentional in the living of caring moment to moment. Another important assumption underlying this theory is the idea that persons are whole and complete in the moment. And this is probably one of the most difficult or challenging assumptions to buy into. In nursing, we are used to taking a medical perspective approach, which uh, appropriately is a fix-it approach. From our perspective of nursing and from the perspective of this theory, there is nothing to be fixed. There is nothing that's broken. There are no deficits. The uh, function of nursing in the world is to recognize the person as caring, as living caring uniquely, and then to affirm, support, and celebrate that person in their caring and in that way participate with them in living their hopes and dreams for growing and caring. The assumption that persons are whole or complete in the moment is a precious assumption to me. I am always with you with the intention of knowing you as person. You are never part, you're never defined by part, you're never an arm, you're never a leg, you're never a heart. You are always whole. And it's my responsibility through authentic presence to be with you to come to know that wholeness. The next fundamental assumption underlying the theory of nursing as caring is that personhood is a way of living grounded in caring. And that, of course, is one of the things that we attempt to achieve in the caring between, enhancing personhood, enhancing our capacity to live caring in the world, moment to moment, living grounded in caring. And associated with that is the next assumption that says personhood is enhanced through participation in nurturing relationships with caring others. And that's where nursing practice comes in. And then the final assumption, which we believe is important, um, contextually at least, is the idea that nursing is both a discipline and a profession. Nursing is indeed a very privileged discipline and profession. And as such, it is incumbent upon us to really be able to articulate the specialized, unique knowledge of nursing.
and a professional practice. So when we say that a discipline has a domain of knowledge, for example, um, we have said for many, many years that caring is the essence of nursing. That's something that every nurse would probably agree to. Yes, caring is the essence of nursing. So if that is true, then I believe that that caring becomes a domain of knowledge which we are obligated to study. That's why we, we ought to be studying caring in every nursing program, whether it is nursing is caring or just studying caring, because caring is a very special domain of knowledge within our discipline. So one of the most um, important concepts that we work with in the theory is the idea of nursing situation. And we understand nursing situation to be a shared, lived experience in which the caring between nurse and nursed enhances personhood. It is in the nursing situation that nursing is created. It's in the nursing situation that nursing is known. We believe from our work with practicing nurses and from our study that all that is important of nursing is known through the nursing situation. We use the nursing situation as a medium for study. Nursing situations, once they've been lived originally, creatively, can then be used to study nursing. And as each student enters into that situation, the situation actually lives and continues to evolve and grow. We use the um, Carper's patterns of knowing, personal knowing, ethical knowing, empirical knowing, and aesthetic knowing in working with our theory. But here in particular, in talking about nursing situation, I think it's useful to point out that aesthetic knowing is particularly relevant. And when we're working with practicing nurses or in our teaching, we like to invite people to render their understanding, their lived experience of nursing, render it aesthetically. Another important concept in the theory of nursing is caring is the idea of the call for nursing. What it is that nurses do, nurses enter into the world of another in order to come to know that person as caring person and to hear calls for nursing, to come to understand what is it that matters to you today? Who are you as caring person? What are your hopes and dreams for growing and caring? And how can I be with you today in a way that matters? It is an idea that helps direct our attention and helps nurses create the kind of nursing that's appropriate for the situation. Together with the call for nursing is the nurturing response. The nurturing response is the uniquely created response of the nurse to that which matters to the person. A call for nursing is always a call that says in one way or another, know me as caring person and respect me as caring person. So that a nurturing response then is always a, a response to that general call, but the nursing response is created specifically toward that which matters to the person in the moment. Neither calls nor responses can be canned, can be pre-conceptualized, can be predicted ahead of time, because calls are unique in the moment. Calls are uniquely heard in the moment. And thus, responses are uniquely created for this situation. It's not to say that there aren't some commonalities so that we can study about calls and prepare ourselves to create ranges of appropriate responses. But the call and the response is something that occurs in the caring between, the caring between nurse and nursed. Related to the idea of call and response is the idea of direct invitation. 
indirect invitation, we say to the patient, I am here to care with and for you today. How can I care for you in ways that matter? How can we together create an environment of caring that will help you get to where you want to be? And again, this theory doesn't address brokenness or needs for fixes or needs for um, replenishing deficits. And so that question, that direct invitation, is not about um, necessarily, how can I fix you today? But how is it that today you are trying to live caring in this situation in ways that are true for you? And how can I help you with that? Another concept that's important to the theory of nursing as caring is the concept, the dance of caring person. Each person has something to contribute to the caring environment. In some theories, it would be said that the patient was at the center. In the dance of caring persons, the patient is there, the nurse is there, the physician may be there, the physical therapist may be there, the person that manages the financial office may be there. Definitely the person who cleans the room and who brings the food, they're all in this dance of caring persons. They are all contributing their own unique caring to the full development of personhood for all who are involved. We have the privilege of being with someone with the intention of nursing them. From the nursing as caring perspective, this happens in a nursing situation, which is that lived experience between nurse and nursed in which the caring enhances personhood through this being with the person in the caring between the nurse and nursed. Now, when I am with you in your wholeness and with the intention of hearing your story, with the intention of wanting to know who you are as caring person, through that, I will hear what I would call calls for nursing. What matters most to you? What are your calls for nursing? And it is that that informs my response. So it's that that directs then my nurturing response for what I will do with you and for you because of what I hear. And the way that I do that is through how I live my unique caring, my unique expressions of caring. It's another story I'll never forget. Uh, years ago, I was at a, a conference, and we were talking about stories. And this nurse stood up, and she told this beautiful story of a young child who was dying from leukemia and um, had this story within her for 15 years and just then shared this story. And how she told how this mother lived many miles away and she had other children and how she had to call this mom to come because she had the sense that this little girl was going to die. And when the mom got to the hospital, the mother and the nurse laid in bed and hugged this child. Now, the unique expression of caring of that nurse was to get in bed and hug the mom and the child together. Now, I don't know that I would have done that, that that would have been my unique expression of caring. But by hearing that story, I learned, and I think I would be free to climb in bed and hug a child or hug someone who needed that hug. So it's in sharing these expressions of caring through the story that again, we grow in our competency to express our caring. It's, it's kind of freeing. I find that the caring model works for me because I think being compassionate is at the core of this, you know, all of this. People don't think of the shots that we give or the IVs that we hang or the compressions on their chest as what they really care about. What they care about is that you're caring for them as a person, that you're not forgetting that they're a person in that bed and who, you know, who they are. There are situations every day that happen here that really um, emphasize the fact that we're becoming more person-centered instead of object-centered. Uh, this morning, for instance, I walked into the triage room and there was a woman all by herself in there crying. And I didn't know if she was the patient or the family member, but I asked her, um, 
if she was in distress and I said, it, can I get your vital sign? She goes, oh, I'm not the patient. That was my husband. I was just having my moment here. So I started talking to her, and as I did, um, the triage nurse came back in. The triage nurse had just wheeled her husband away and um, talked to her a little bit. She was really upset about her husband's condition. And the triage nurse said to her, well, you know, life is what happens to us when we're making other plans. And then they hugged. And you could just see the relief on the woman's face that she did feel she'd been heard, she'd been supported. And it was a really um, caring situation. And uh, it really showed how the nurse and the nurse are communicating, caring. And it was very very indicative of how some of the transformation has taken place here.